I can't see anything down here. Could I get some light on this, please? Ah, much better. Hello, and welcome to Hard On Gaming, where the games are hard and so am I. I'm your host, Big Stiffy, and this is a little bit different than my normal videos. I'm going to be going over the good, the bad, and the ugly of Industrial Craft 2. Why I say the good, the bad, and the ugly? Well, I feel like Industrial Craft 2 was very good, but it also did some very bad things. And it has become very ugly. So, I'm going to start this video off by answering a few questions over why some of the most uh, important features of industrial craft were largely overlooked. So let's start off with farming. Farming was overlooked mainly because forestry added the automatic farms. So if I take my teleporter here, I have an IC2 uh, crop farm set up. Now as we can see, we have a variety of different crops growing all within tight quarters. We got pumpkins, cocoa beans, flowers, even nether wart, and hops, as well as reeds. So the forestry auto farms, uh, when forestry was first introduced, the auto farms were very easy. You simply set up all the machinery needed to run the farm, you give it power, and eventually they become self-sustaining. You no longer have to input any kind of fuel. They can fuel themselves thanks to the miracle that was Buildcraft Pipes. And uh, because of that combination, the IC2 farms were pretty much never, never investigated. Another reason was, for the most part, documentation was lacking. The documentation, hello pig, the documentation was simply just not there. So if people wanted to find out how something worked and how to use something, nine out of ten times they just wouldn't find uh, any information on it. Um, like the IC2 crop breeding, it was a way of obtaining new crops as well as getting some other crops by simply crossbreeding wheat together. So you could get pumpkin or reeds or melons or flowers just by breeding wheat together over and over again. And in fact, that is how I got the variety of crops you see in front of me. Um, but for the most part, the uh, byproduct of crossbreeding was entirely random. Uh, there was rumor that you could breed certain plants together together to have a higher chance of getting a desired result, but ultimately it was entirely random. Uh, another one of the things that was largely overlooked was uh, booze barrels. Uh, brewing, despite the fact that it was meant to uh, replace vanilla uh, potion brewing entirely was again largely overlooked due to lack of documentation and its reliance on the crop breeding from IC2. So if I tap this booze barrel here and get myself a stone mug, I've got myself black stuff. So I put about 64 hops and eight water cells into that booze barrel. But it hasn't had any time to really ferment. So it's just kind of like goop at the moment. So let's get rid of that. If you drink it, bad stuff is going to happen. But the booze barrels relied on both a combination of real-time hours in order for the product to ferment, as well as a certain ratio of uh, organic material to water in the barrel. So if you put like eight water cells into a booze barrel and 32 hops, 
you might get lighter booze brews. Uh, or if you put something like 64 uh, sugar cane into a booze barrel with 32 water, you would get some potent rum. So it, it did rely on quite a few factors, but ultimately its reliance on IC2 and real-time hours to produce any kind of alcohol ultimately ultimately uh, pushed people away from this feature. So, let's see. Let's go on to the next question, which is the miner. Now, IC2 had a digital miner, or an electric miner, I should say. And if we fly over here, we can see I have a IC2 miner, which relies on a couple things, or a few things. For one thing, it does need power. It also needs a electric drill. Now you could either use the diamond drill or you could just use uh, a simple electric drill, which would be this. A little bit cheaper, but it'll work either way. And then you had to make mining pipe for it. The mining pipe was a bit tedious, as it required a lot of refined iron plus tree taps. The other thing it needs is an ore scanner. Now I think OD scans for uh, ore depth scanner. I'm not entirely sure on that. Um, but this would basically scan the area and tell you, you can actually use this outside the miner as well. You could use this outside and click on an area and it would tell you the ore density. The higher the number, the better the ore density is. So like this is 41, that's very good. So now if I put this back in the miner, this is what the miner uses to search for ore as it drills down. And if we look underneath it, we can see its mining pipe has gone deep into the earth. But this was largely overlooked because at the time, we both had Red Power 2 and Buildcraft and uh, Equivalent Exchange 2. Now, the Buildcraft quarry kind of made the miner obsolete because the quarry was easier to build. Uh, the, tor the landmarks that you had to use to set its boundary size were cheap, and getting it powered was pretty simple. I think at the time you could use something like a couple Stirling engines and it would have more than enough power. And then, of course, we had uh, Red Power 2, which I don't know if frames were implemented at this time. I'm pretty sure they were. Yeah. So you had frames. So people were making giant frame quarries, which could practically eat entire chunks of the world at a time. Um, and then, of course, there was also Equivalent Exchange 2, which made... Uh, everything pretty much obsolete. Once you got into Equivalent Exchange 2, uh, one, you could get like, uh, I think the, the Destruction Catalyst and just dig out entire parts of the world. You could dig out in a, a continent at a time. So, yeah. The Miner, sadly, never got any love. Even though, uh, if the Miner ever ran into uh, fluid as it was digging, you could pump it up with the electric pump as well. Another little feature that was uh, very overlooked, you place the pump adjacent to the miner and any fluid the miner runs into, the pump will suck up and put into an empty cell. Aside from that, it can suck up either water or lava. So this was actually a decent way of automatically getting either water cells or lava. So let's go on to the next bit of overlooked things. Cables uh, were essential to IC2. 
However, a lot of people didn't really like them for the fact that you couldn't hide them like the Red Power 2 pneumatic tubes. Uh, with the Red Power pneumatic tubes, of course, you had multi-parts, and this made hiding things, uh, I think, a little bit tedious, but sort of cheap and easy. Um, now, the cables themselves could be hidden, and a lot of people didn't really understand uh, back then that you could hide the cables inside of construction foam. So if I go over here, I have a CF backpack and a CF sprayer. This is construction foam. Now the construction foam can hide the wires inside of it. Now of course, uh, one of the problems was, as we saw, the wires were all connected. So if I go ahead and break this stuff, and this is uh, one of the problems is that once you, oops, once you have the wires inside of construction foam, you have to break the wire in order to uh, make any changes, which of course breaks the construction foam. And I lost a piece there. Uh, okay, sure. All right, there. So I'll put the wire da back down again. And as we can see, it is connecting. So if I come over here, I can get a couple of these paint rollers. Now the paint rollers, as you can see, separate the cables. But it also works inside of the construction foam blocks. So if I paint the cables to uh, separate them, I can now uh, spray paint or spray construction foam in and the cables inside will not connect. So now if ever I want to plug into any one of uh, these lines, whether it be high voltage, medium voltage, or low voltage, I can do that without having any explosions. Now of course, construction foam takes a while to solidify. And if you walk into it, uh, you start to suffocate. So let's speed up the process. This was something I didn't find out about until 164 of Minecraft, that you could actually solidify the construction foam with the use of sand. And that absolutely blew my mind because in uh, 147, I had spent something like uh, a week constructing a construction foam um, city and I had to wait for all the construction foam to just dry. <laughs> so there you go. Now we have three separate lines. Let's pretend that they're high voltage, medium voltage, and low voltage running concurrently inside of construction foam so I don't have to see them. And of course I can paint the construction foam so I know which lines are which. So there you go. That's another one of the largely overlooked features. And of course, it was largely overlooked due to the fact that there was poor documentation. So the next thing that we're gonna go over is advanced construction. Now construction was largely overlooked, again, because of poor documentation, and at the time we had BuildCraft, which we could simply uh, give blueprints to a machine and it would auto-build for us. Of course, we had to build a template building first, but there you go. Now, with the scaffolding, and there's two variants of the scaffolding that Industrial Craft 2 added, the iron scaffold and the wooden scaffold. Now the wooden scaffold was the easiest stuff to make and if you clicked at any bottom part of the scaffolding it would build upward with it. Making it very easy to get to high places without too much hassle. And of course if you broke one of the bottom blocks 
it would all come tumbling down. Now, one of the things people didn't really know about the scaffolding is that it has a weight limit. So you can build out from the top scaffolding. However, you can only build out two blocks because the wood construction frame is not that sturdy. However, if I give myself a bunch of sticks, I can click on that scaffold with the sticks, come back over here, and now it has increased the weight limit of the scaffolding and I can build out even further. Something that was not covered into the, in the documentation until much later. And the iron scaffolding works much to the same respect. I can build upward and I can build out. Now because the iron scaffolding is a much stronger material, it has a higher weight limit. So I can build five out instead of just two. Now I can increase that weight limit by giving myself iron fence. I click on this scaffolding with the iron fence and I have increased the weight limit. So there we go. And that's pretty far. Again, overlooked simply because no documentation. Now you might be thinking, well what's the point of even building with scaffolding in the first place? Wouldn't it be just faster and more efficient to build the building uh, you want first time? Sure, it would be faster, it would be more efficient. However, I think scaffolding is like a, a building prototyping material. You can, build, you can build whatever you want out of the scaffolding to prototype a building design before you finalize it. So you don't have to spend so much time going back and changing the design. Now of course I got the construction foam backpack equipped, so if I spray any of the scaffolding, I get my scaffolding back. And of course, trying to walk through it makes me suffocate. So let's equip my jetpack. And there you go. Now I can spray all the scaffolding, get all my material back, and finalize the design that I built. I think that was a pretty useful feature. And then of course you could always paint it. You could hide wires in it and have your solar panels at the top powering everything through the walls. So there you go. That's one of the things that was severely overlooked but useful nonetheless. I bet you were expecting some sort of fancy outro. Nope. Just this. But hey, you know what would be cool? Clicking one of those links below? Yeah, that'd make it cool.